Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. I've just wrapped up a week's worth of work on an outdoor movie festival, and I got home about 2 o'clock this morning after the strike last night, and tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I'm headed out of town again, but this time, thankfully, it's for a few days of fun and not work. This past week was the last job I have on the books for this summer's outdoor season, and wrapping up August with a chilly 61-degree loadout last night was a really nice uh, change from the normal end of summer humidity we get here in DC. This summer has been really great. It's been a lot of fun, had a lot of great jobs, but traveling for work for a couple of weeks to Central America back in March, I feel like this summer has just been going on forever. And I'm absolutely ready to get back into long pants and hoodies and get back on my soup game for the rest of the year. This past week's job was a relatively simple one. It was a charity event and we showed movies for three nights with a setup and testing day and night uh, back on Wednesday of this week. We had one of the medium sized 52 foot air screens out there for the uh, projection surface. We had a Christie Digital CP2230 projector system uh, on site for our projection needs. And as this was a uh, more casual charity event, uh, we weren't using DCP, this was a Blu-ray and uh, we used Playback Pro to play any solid state media, uh, but we didn't use the DCP side of the system for this one. For audio, I had a very simple setup. I had eight of the JBL VRX 932 LAP powered boxes, along with two of the uh, 918 SP powered subs. I had obviously some backups on site as well, but that's what I used for the system. Uh, the reason for such a small system, this field is a little over 200 feet deep and, and about as wide, uh, the reason for such a small system is entirely down to the proximity of the neighbors. Uh, the location for this is part of the charity and we just have to deal with the fact that there's neighbors right next door and they've been less than enthusiastic in years past of larger uh, sound systems going late into the night. Uh, showing movies. So taking this into account, we down mix all of the surround audio uh, down to a simple left right plus sub configuration. That gets sent to the primary left right which is a pair of those VRX 932 per side on scaffold with a single 918 sub underneath them. And then I run two delay zones, one out at 90 feet and then the second delay zone out at 150 feet. Uh, and that allows me to keep that primary system down by the screen which is closest to the houses at a much lower level than I normally would. Uh, by only putting a couple boxes up there and only concentrating on covering the first 90 feet or so, I don't have to have this putting out nearly as much energy as I would if I was trying to throw the whole length of the field. Unfortunately, the subs we just have to keep a little lower than I would normally like. Typically a field like this I'd want four double eighteens minimum, but it's a charity event and we make it work. The delays get processed as linked stereo pairs. Now the reason we do this is to try to preserve any stereo panning and the effects that might be in the movie surround mix. If we can preserve some of that, that's great. And we get away with doing this by being able to down mix uh, those surround channels independently to the left right. So I can put that center channel with my dialogue uh, into both left and right so you're not missing the dialogue and you still preserve some of that surround feel uh, in a left right configuration. Obviously this changes per movie so every day before we screen a movie we spend a good amount of time uh, going through that movie, spot checking and adjusting the mix and making sure that we're not missing anything, uh, making sure that we're not losing any effects or having anything weird cancel or uh, missing any dialogue. You have to go through uh, chapter by chapter or every few uh, segments of the movie and double check to make sure that you're actually creating a usable mix for the audience and not just uh, not just creating a large stereo feel. Obviously the dialogue is generally the most important thing and you want to make sure that you're uh, getting all of that. This is a rare situation uh, but for this specific event uh, the logistics and politics involved with getting the event off the ground dictate the approach and we make it work. A true surround setup for a crowd this size would have me trying to throw nearly 200 feet back towards the houses with my rear surround speaker. So that's just not going to work. And as much as we love to create those immersive surround outdoor movie experiences, 
sometimes you've just got to work within the parameters of what your client needs. And in this case, a simple left, right, uh, plus sub did a really great job. I was in the back of the truck. I walked the venue. I walked all over the place. And for a casual uh, movie festival that wasn't a critical film festival, it was more than acceptable. It sounded great. Uh, lots of people had a really good time. We showed some kids' movies. We showed some, uh, some fun stuff. And it was a really good week. Keeping things simple again, we used a Roland VR50 HD video mixer to handle all the inputs coming from the Blu-ray players and the laptop running uh, Playback Pro. And this is a great little mixer for when you have a simple gig like this where you've got a bunch of different inputs, you want to run backups and redundant machines. This unit allows you to have the audio follow the video switching if you're sourcing the audio from the HDMI or from a digital output. And it does some nice cut transitions and it's a really good little switcher when you need something with plenty of digital inputs, uh, a few handy features, but you don't necessarily need the flexibility and the versatility of something like a full-blown analog way switcher. So thumbs up to the Roland VR50 HD. It did a great job for us in this uh, application, and I think it's a really decent unit for the money. I typically do all of my work on these shows with an iPad. It's just simpler, and it's generally easier to control the touch mix that way because you get multi-touch. Uh, and I absolutely love the new QSC Touch Mix uh, app update. The latest update is fantastic. Uh, the way they've added the aux uh, send selection right where your left thumb goes on an iPad mini, it's brilliant. On an iPad mini, it gives me almost everything I want, and it's a really nice update. I do wish there were a couple of features. Being able to link channels and then still, or before you link them, be able to select independent aux send levels to then have those two channels linked without it overwriting that would be awesome. Uh, it'd be nice just to have a little more flexibility in the way that the, the linking works. It'd be nice to be able to choose a little deeper uh, what gets linked. But uh, other than that, it's a great uh, mixer for this kind of stuff for small jobs. It travels really easy. The iPad app is killing. I use the internal uh, Wi-Fi in the thing. I don't have to break out an external router very often with that QSC touch mix. It's uh, kind of surprising actually some of the situations where I've tested it in thinking it was going to completely fail with the internal Wi-Fi and having it work reliably for uh, weeks on end worth of shows in, in challenging venues. So big thumbs up to QSC for getting that right unlike some other manufacturers. I often set up at the back of the truck during the movie and use a little Pelican case as a mini front of house setup and that lets me get in front of the noise coming off the projector but uh, still close enough to it that I can enjoy some of its residual heat that comes off on a chilly night like last night. So that's the deal with that. That's what I've been up to. This coming week I'm going to be out of town, but I mentioned in the last video that the new stickers are in. They're awesome, and I'm going to be giving those away to four members when the next batch arrives, and that'll be you know, probably next week. When I get back into town at the end of this week, hopefully the new stickers will be here, and I can send those out. So go sign up for the forum if you want one of those. And I've also been working on another little project that I talked about briefly on my Patreon page and got a little bit of feedback from some of my patrons, which is awesome. Thank you, everybody who supports the channel on there. There's only a handful of you, but you're awesome supporters, and it helps me so much to keep this channel going, even if it's only a dollar a month in support. Uh, just knowing that there's people out there that want to continue uh, helping to make these videos happen motivates me to work hard to get more videos out. So over the years, I've carried all sorts of different notebooks. In recent years, I've really tried hard to get away from paper notebooks. I've got some, I typically have a moleskin notebook, one of these sized ones here in my bag. I take them on jobs. I've got some of the smaller ones, and I've been really trying in the last year or so to get away from the paper notebooks and move towards something digital that's easier to archive. And I've gone through Google Keep. I've gone through... Uh, what is it, uh, Evernote, I've gone through a few others, and I really like Microsoft OneNote. I love OneNote, I use it uh, just for the way I think being able to write and move things around and draw with my stylus or you know use it on an iPad. It, OneNote works for me. I know a lot of people love Google Keep, but OneNote really does work for me, and I've used that effectively in the past year. I've switched from using paper notebooks to pretty much my iPad and laptop. The problem I have is when I go on jobs, Typically, looking through these notebooks, typically what will happen on like a, a normal gig with a touring band or something is we'll have a stage plot ahead of time and we'll work to get everything set up before they arrive. 
uh, or you know corporate gig or any sort of job where you've got some of the information beforehand but inevitably what happens is the people the client the talent whoever shows up on site and there's some changes you need to make so you get together when they come in the door by shaking hands we all got a coffee and quickly we run down any changes or anything and what the goals are for the day and what they need and, and that kind of stuff and what ends up happening is you simply can't or I can't be effective in those situations with an iPad. Uh, it's, I, I feel like it's a little rude, maybe this is just old school, but you're standing there talking to people for the first time and you just need to get the basic little pieces of information, maybe a little sketch of what we're going to do with a stage plot, and to sit there and try to input that into an iPad in real time, it, it's just too it's too slow it's too cumbersome it's too much looking down it's too much if I'm standing there doing it on my phone on one note it looks like I'm on my phone while we're trying to have a team meeting and I know that's not the case I know everybody knows that's not the case but it just doesn't feel right and it's way easier just to have a little scrap of paper in most of those instances just to jot down some notes maybe a quick input list on the fly that you want to share with the rest of your crew uh, obviously, you can text that to each other and use OneNote or use Notes or iCloud or any of this stuff, but sometimes it's just easier to put it down on paper. So I went back through my notebooks to look at how I use them, and typically it's something along the lines of a quick listing of input channels, maybe a listing of what I'm going to do with the outputs on a corporate job especially. I'm going to label my aux outputs to remind myself of where they're going. Uh, and that could be the start of a meeting. Somebody's going to say, hey, okay, we've got a couple of lectern mics. We're going to do a couple of stick mics or a couple of labs along with that. And then we're going to have Q&A mics out in the audience. So there goes our input list, uh, video playback, things like that. And then on the output side, I might need to give a record feed to the press. I might need a general press mult for additional press. I might need zone send. So I'm going to label those things out. Uh, and I just want to jot those down really quickly. And then maybe a little drawing of uh, the physical space if we're setting up the stage a certain way, a stage plot. And then just some room for notes, a phone number for the tour manager, production manager, whatever. So what I came up with thinking of all that and how I use my notebooks is just a simple little notebook I can carry in a pocket. It's about the size of like a golf scorecard and it's just a very simple notebook and inside it looks like this. So you've got two columns of 16 with a space in the middle to number. You've got a place to draw a stage plot with some arrows facing downstage towards the audience and a little spot down here for general notes and things. And this book has been really handy and I think it's going to work out well. I've got some feedback from some local engineers that I know and uh, I'm making more of these. I've only made a few just to, to try out. I'm making a batch right now that's going to go to my Patreon uh, supporters first and then there's going to be uh, plenty of these available for sale on the website if anybody else is interested. So they'll probably come in a two or three pack. They're going to be really cheap. I'm making these myself. I'm not having somebody make them. These are just super simple. I'm going to put the template for this. Uh, it's an Adobe Illustrator file. I'm going to put this up so you can download this. If you want to make these yourself, I'll give you everything you need. Uh, links to Amazon to buy all the materials. The cover material, the, the weight paper that I use, the ink, the heavy duty staples, the special stapler to make it go like a booklet. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to get rich selling books, but these are handy and they're, they're working for me and I want to put them in your hands if you think you can use them. Uh, but if you want to make them yourself, I will help you do that as well. So audiobook, I've named it uh, DC Sound Op Audio B1 for book one and uh, we'll do some revisions. If there's anything you think you could use different than this uh, for a different, I don't want to make start making custom ones of these for everybody, but I would be interested in making one uh, specifically for video people, for lighting people, uh, riggers, anybody else in the industry that could use a book uh, like this for their role I would be open to making those this is the audio book for right now I will update it uh, if people have suggestions and then it'll be B2 and so on uh, if there's other suggestions but if you have ideas uh, let me know let me know what you think a two pack a three pack uh, they're not going to be expensive as anything like field notes uh, I love those books those are really cool these are not uh, I'm not trying to get into the book game I'm just trying to make a book for audio folks that will actually use and it goes in a pocket it goes in a shirt pocket it goes in a pants pocket you don't even know it's there uh, really handy little book to have and it's got like 20 it's got enough room for like 20 gigs worth of uh, notes and 
things like that. So let me know what you think. If you think a two pack or a three pack would be better and I'll work out a price. And these will be up on the website along with the new stickers very soon. I'm really quite pleased with these. They're very simple. The whole goal is to keep this simple and to make it something that I can make quickly and easily and will be useful. So uh, I hope you like them. I hope people find these to be a handy addition to their everyday carry kit. So that's it for this time. Uh, coming up in the fall, there's going to be lots more stuff. I'm going to get back into some of the projects we started at the start of the summer. It's been such a crazy summer. I've been working on some of this stuff. I just haven't made any videos about it. Uh, the Q-Box project uh, is going to come back. Uh, that's going to be an awesome one. I've got that World War II microphone that I'm retrofitting into a uh, talkback mic for front of house and I've been ordering parts and kind of testing and fooling with stuff and shooting video on the side as I go with that. That'll be ready soon as soon as I get some more time to work on it. So this fall will be a lot of fun with some projects and lots more videos coming up and I hope you stick around. hope you subscribe. I hope you join the website and the forum and uh, go check out these books and the new stickers and ask a question on the forum. Help other people out on the forum. Uh, it's a really cool place and a great community so far of folks that have joined. Again, a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. It's really amazing to know that you want to help make these videos and it motivates me so much more than the than the dollar amount. You know, I'm not getting rich off of Patreon uh, and that's not the goal, but it's really helpful to have those couple extra dollars to to fund projects and get things happening on the website. So thank you so much for being a part of this and for helping me build the channel and the website and the community. It's really awesome that you want to get involved. Hope to see you there and as always, thanks for watching.